There are two containers with rigid walls. The first container holds neon gas and has three times the volume as the second container with argon gas. The neon has one-fifth the pressure of argon. There are same numbers of moles in the two containers. Neon has a molar mass of 20 grams. Argon has a molar mass of 40 grams. Compare the following for the two gases. See if you should fill in bigger than, smaller than, or equal to for the temperature, average kinetic energy, total kinetic energy, root mean square speed, and the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of the gases by 1 Kelvin. For temperature, we can use the PV equals to nRT and solve for the T, which is PV over nR. The two containers have the same number of moles, so N is the same. The R gas constant, of course, is the same, so the temperature is proportional to P times V. For the neon, the pressure is one-fifth that of the argon. The volume is three times that of the argon, so this will be three-fifths that of the argon. And three-fifths is less than one, so the temperature of neon gas is lower than the temperature of the argon gas. In fact, because uh, this is three-fifths, we can say T of neon is three-fifths the temperature of argon. Now let's see it for the average kinetic energy. Average kinetic energy, actually the average translational kinetic energy is 3 halves kT. But for neon and argon, they are monatomic ideal gas. They only have translational kinetic energy. They don't have vibrational or rotational kinetic energy. So it's just the 3 halves kT. That's all the kinetic energy they have. So this is the average translational kinetic energy. It is also the average kinetic energy per molecule. And this 3 halves is a constant. The Boltzmann's constant is a constant. So the average kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature. And since the neon gas has a lower temperature, it has less average kinetic energy. And we can say the average kinetic energy of the neon gas is also three-fifths that of the argon. Total kinetic energy. Again, since they are monatomic ideal gas, they only have translational kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy is the total translational kinetic energy, which will be the number of molecules times the average kinetic energy for each molecule. Because there are same number of moles in each container, same number of uh, molecules in each container. So this is proportional to the average kinetic energy, which is uh, proportional to the temperature. So neon gas has uh, less total kinetic energy. To find out about the root mean square speed, uh, I'll go back to the average kinetic energy again. The average kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and this v is the root mean square speed. And uh, this equals to 3 halves kT. So I can solve for the root mean square speed. If I cancel the 2 and then divide by m on both sides, I get 3 kT divided by the m, and then I just have to take the square root on both sides. So this is proportional to, let's see, 3, of course, is a constant. The Boltzmann's constant is a constant. But the two gases, they have different temperature and the different mass per molecule. So this is proportional to the square root of temperature divided by the mass. The temperature of the neon gas is 3 fifths that of the argon gas. The molar mass of the neon gas is 1 half that of the argon gas, which means that the mass of each molecule will be half that of the argon. So it's 1 half for the mass. So this gives me square root of 6 fifths, which is bigger than 1. That means the root mean square speed is higher for neon than argon. In fact, we can say the root mean square speed of the neon gas is the square root of uh, six-fifths 
times that of the argon gas. For the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of the gases by 1 Kelvin, we will have to look at what temperature is. Temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy. So to raise the temperature, we need to raise the average kinetic energy, which means we need to raise the total kinetic energy. Of course, in the case of monatomic ideal gas, the total kinetic energy only includes the total translational kinetic energy. So we have to raise the N times 3 halves kT. The heat we add will only be used to increase the total kinetic energy because the containers have rigid walls. The rigid walls means the volumes of the gases do not change. So we do not need extra energy to increase the volume of the gases. We will learn about the work involved in changing the volume of a gas in later lessons. So the heat is only used to change the total kinetic energy. And in the case of monatomic ideal gases, it is the change in total translational kinetic energy N times 3 halves kT. For the two gases, they are the same number of molecules. 3 halves is a constant, K is a constant, so I can take all that out and then times delta T. Since we're raising the temperature by the same amount, this will be the same for both gases. So the answer is equal to. Although argon has more mass, the amount of heat needed has nothing to do with the mass. It only has to do with the number of molecules. Another thing is, if we're comparing neon with, say, same number of moles of oxygen gas instead of argon, then we will need more heat to raise the temperature of oxygen by the same amount because oxygen is a diatomic gas. To increase the temperature of oxygen, not only do we have to increase its translational kinetic energy, we will also have to increase its rotational and vibrational kinetic energy. Therefore, more heat would be needed.